All right, welcome to uh, uh, the DJ Food Stamp record room, future record room, music studio, production studio, uh, storage closet, all that stuff. Um, I'm just in here because uh, I'm real annoyed with the uh, sound of the rain on the tin roof. So we, we came in here. You know, we've got a lid on here and it's a little quieter, although pretty, pretty uh, echoey in here, you know, a little acoustic stuff we'll have to treat. But um, anyways, just imagine this in like a few months, uh, floors, walls painted, records in shelves, artwork, toys, all the shit that's basically stored up in my barn is going to be in here it's gonna be it's gonna be killer but uh yeah um got a heater hooked up here heat and ac hooked up in here so we good um but any, anyways uh you know just trying to move around a little bit too um but today we're gonna talk about keeping it real and 1990s boom bap rap um this is a nice segue from g-funk um because in so many ways we're gonna look at how you know, 90s boom bap rap, and I'm talking, you know, 92, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pretty, pretty much 93, though, through uh, 96 East Coast um, rap music, um, you know, and uh, a lot of New York City stuff, um, but, you know, East Coast broadly defined, so Chicago, um, you know, etc. So it's not just New York City, so... Um, but we're going to define this era as 1993 through 1996, so a four-year period. Um, and the, the aesthetics of boom bap are, are, are you know, kind of lay it out, um, you know, based upon what you listen to, you know, you should have a, a bit of a handle on it. Um, number one, you know, uh, Tribe Called Quest was like, yo, you know, they set this, you know, new... Um, benchmark this new style uh, with you know sampling jazz you know sampling jazzy records and this is a you know for the most part a movement away from that um, you know let's get away from from that 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 mellowed out you know uh, vibe you know so to speak and that jazzy vibe a lot of this is defined by like really gritty really crunchy uh, really snappy, but really kind of dark um, drums and, and beats, you know, just really gritty beats, you know, um, you know, really uh, crunchy in so many ways. Um, low fidelity, so, you know, talk, let's talk about hi-fi and G-funk, well, this is kind of the opposite, low fidelity is a part of this. Um, you know, and the aesthetics are really sample based. You know, everything's about sampling, making beats from samples. Um, you know, no interpolation, you know, none of that shit. Let's, let's just sample records. Um, uh, a heavy use of pianos and really dark, lower frequency, lower pitched uh, piano sounds, even like drum sounds, pitching down your, your snares, a semitone or so, or maybe even more, just to make them darker. Um, lots of filtered bass lines, and these bass lines were sparse, you know, so not a lot of bass, not a lot of notes, just, you know, um, really uh, sparse, minimalistic, filtered uh, bass lines. And that's, you know, a lot of the music stuff. Um, lyrically, you know, really a true movement about lyricism, a true prioritization on lyricism, like having really good lyrics, poetic lyrics, saying stuff, um, you know, uh, that was huge, you know, L just being lyrical, dexter dexterous with your voice, having, having real dope flow, um, all that stuff, okay? And within that, as we'll talk about for the majority of today, um, authenticity, you know, um, is a huge, huge part. And often, you know, as we'll talk about it, a reaction to NWA, a reaction to the takeover of the West Coast, 
with all these, uh, you know, studio gangsters, you know, and, and people who, you know, write about doing this and that, but never did this and that. Not to say that um, a lot of these, you know, boom bap, you know, East Coast rappers didn't do what they talked about, but a lot of them did do some of the shit they talked about. And um, a lot of them, though, didn't really play that up, you know, didn't really play up um, the, you know, the crimes they committed as a persona. Um, that was very much... Um, that was very much a West Coast thing. That was a Tupac thing. That was a Dre thing. You know, all, the, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, like a lot of the themes, oops, a lot of the themes um, from gangster rap, you know, materialism, uh, upward mobility, um, you know, vi violence, uh, drugs, selling, crime, uh, all that stuff. But it was less verbal cinema a little bit more realistic, a little less like surreal, a little less um, hyper real, you know, exaggerated, whatever have you. It was a little less showy. Um, so it, it came across as more authentic. Um, the use of DJs for scratch hooks. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, with, with gangster rap and specifically with G-Funk, um, you know, we had, um, you know, people singing hooks. We had very catchy choruses and hooks like Snoop, Snoop Dogg's Gin and Juice, you know, stuff like that, you know. Um, and that, that was not in the boom bap rap. It was like, let's have a DJ, um, like DJ Premier or someone, scratch on the choruses. So take a, a few different lines from different, um, you know, rap songs that fit the, the theme of story of the song um, or, you know, the, con the, the concept or, or whatever, and cut up those um, samples uh, in time, rearranging them sometimes or putting them back to back to, um, to, say, to, t to say something on a chorus. So, it wasn't about having a, a catchy hook or chorus. It was, you know, bring back the DJ, have the DJ do the thing. And this is probably like one of the most incredible, incredibly important parts is that whereas G-Funk music was engineered and made the sound really good in a car, um, to really bump in, in a car with an emphasis on, on fidelity, um, you know, a lot of this boom bap stuff was meant for headphones. It was meant for Walkmans. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, like, transportation. Like, how do you get around in, in the East Coast cities, right? It ain't like Los Angeles where you have a car. Like, you, you're taking subways, mostly subways, buses, etc. You know, and you're not typically bumping that shit. You know, you're not bumping your music. You, it's all about the Walkman. You know, it's all about the, the portable cassette player, primarily the portable cassette player. Um, and this, you know, again, has a lot to do with the transit system in New York City and how people listen to music. You know, it wasn't in their car because they didn't have no fucking car. You know, most, most, most New Yorkers, like real New Yorkers, don't have cars. You know, like they, they, and what I mean by real New Yorkers is I mean like real New Yorkers, not people who move to New York City um, for a job or because they, they want to open a boutique pickle store in Brooklyn or whatever the fuck it is. Um, these are like, you know, people who, multi-generational New Yorkers, you know. Um, anyways, um, you know, you, you ride the subway and you listened in the 90s to your shit in your headphones. So, so, so um, there was a little bit of a, you know, developing the sound that kind of catered to that. Um, you know, cassettes and the hiss and in cassettes and just trying to make stuff sound like, again, the low, with having low fidelity being part of the vibe, you know, overall, um, it really suited cassettes and it really suited um, portable cassette players really, really well.